this video, I will be providing an outline of the different characteristics of coastal depositional landforms and explaining their formation. The four landforms I'll be focusing on are number one, sand and shingle beaches, number two, sand dunes, number three, spits, and number four, bars. The most common depositional landform found along our great stretches of coastline is a sand or shingle beach. The majority of the time our sand beaches are formed by constructive waves. These are waves which have a strong swash and they push the sediment up onto the beach. Most of our beaches, especially along the south coast, which is where I am now, are made up of pebbles. Most of the sand which was once here has been washed away by the power of the sea, leaving behind much larger sediment which has come from eroded cliffs. A common feature along many areas of our coastline are formed as small embryo dunes begin to form nearest to the sea. It is the build-up of deposited sediment along a beach that allows this to happen. Over time, these small sand dunes become more established and grow in size due to the vegetation. The most well known of these types of vegetation is marron grass. Due to the long roots of this grass, it is able to withstand the fast winds and it holds the sand together to stop it from blowing away. When the marron grass and other vegetation decays, it adds more organic matter to the sand. It is this organic matter that provides opportunity for more plants to colonise the dunes. In areas where there is a consistent amount of longshore drift, the movement of sediment along a coastline due to swash and backwash, if that particular coastline changes direction, the transported sediment will be deposited. Over a long period of time with significant deposition, this sediment will begin to build up to form new land. This is called a spit, like this one that I'm standing on at Dawlish Warren in Devon. This new land will eventually stretch out towards the sea, extending the length of the coastline. 
Once this happens, the process of longshore drift is able to continue, transporting sediment along the coastline. Which of course, once it reaches the end of this new land, the spit, it too is also deposited. Normally, the end of the spit becomes curved. This is due to the wave direction shaping the land. This is called a recurved end. Due to the formation of a spit, another geographical feature is formed, a salt marsh. This forms behind the spit where the water is calmer. Salt marshes provide ideal conditions for wildlife habitats, especially for migrating birds. If longshore drift continues to happen along the length of a spit and deposition continues to happen at the end of a spit, it may reach a new stretch of the coastline. If this was to happen and this spit that I'm standing on now reached the land that you can see behind me, it would no longer be known as a spit, but it would be known as a bar. Thank you for watching my video on coastal deposition. I hope it does support you in your geography lessons. Please do subscribe to my YouTube channel and follow me on Twitter and Instagram for many more videos like this one, which will provide support and guidance through your geography GCSE or A-level.